Hello, morning. I think I know most of you. Um, I mean, a few familiar, unfamiliar faces. And for those who I don't know, um, is this your first time that you've heard about Code for Australia? It's a bit of research. Not everyone has heard about us. Has everyone heard about City Lab? Or has it? Exactly. Cool. Well, they will, um, Lorraine will be a, um, will do an introduction about what City Lab is and how it's connected to the City of Melbourne. Um, so I'm Alvaro, I'm from Code for Australia, and this is something that we've started doing around six weeks ago to do open houses. Um, it's basically opening up ourselves to the community. So we're strong about opening up government, and if we want to do that, maybe we should be doing that as well ourselves. So it's basically everything that um, um, we're working on, and uh, the idea is not so much about this is how amazing the project is going, but looking at what has gone awesome and what has what is not going so awesome, and just um, really having an open and frank conversation about what we're doing. We're starting to do this these um, open houses in within um, kind of like friends, organization friends, I, I would call it. Um, the first one is City of Melbourne, so I'm really excited that we're here today. So City Lab is something that I've been, I, I want to see, I want to say part of um, for quite a bit of time. And so since it's very early days um, at City of Melbourne and now moving here, so I'm extremely excited that we're here and hopefully um, uh, yeah, there will be a lot more things that we that will come out of this. Um, but yeah, I just want to yes, thank you for coming, and then a little bit of a more proper introduction from Lorraine to tell you about what City Lab is. Thanks, Alvaro. Hi, everyone. Um, so Lorraine Choi, City, City of Melbourne Smart City Office, City Lab. Um, so City Lab itself uh, was born back in 2012 out of the non-conference where we ask the community, how will Melbourne thrive in the digital future? And a web strategy we had um, basically was complete. And we went, oh, what, what, what do we do now? Do we have another web strategy? And we just realized, well, web is everywhere. Digital is everywhere. And we probably don't need another strategy. Um, so we went out to the community at that unconference overwhelmingly 250 people showed up and gave their weekend to tell us what they thought was some great ideas what we could do three big takeaways the first one was people have a great love of melbourne the second one is there's an awful lot of smart people in melbourne who've got some great ideas and the third thing was but they didn't really know what council did versus other uh, government agencies and how to interact with council if you have this great idea outside of a very, um, I suppose, uh, process orientated system. So either through a procurement process or through responding in an official way via submission to council. So we said, we actually need a way of bringing together the community and the smart people and the experts across council to solve these challenges that we all face in the city. So that's where City Lab was born. And when Ben Rimmer, the CEO, came on board, um, his vision was around a smart city and he created a smart city office. So bringing together city research um, knowledge geospatial team and city lab to really look at and Michelle's going to talk about this in a few moments who's our chief digital officer but really look at how can we enable uh, Melbourne to maintain this livability so utilizing the smarts of the community but what are the needs of the community and how do we use data and technology to enable us to solve these challenges so I'm very proud to say three or four years later city lab is um, we've got a permanent team uh, we've got a location here now on the street albeit temporary for the moment we're we're here testing out a few things 
And the third thing is we've got a whole suite of projects and initiatives on the go that you can be part of. Um, so some of the projects that are happening, we've got a design sprint next week, which is all about digital placemaking. Uh, it's a very emerging term. It's how are we understanding what changes are happening in the city based on where you live. And what we're doing is going through our city lab process. We have gone through a discovery phase, so defining what the problem is, by actually going out to the community and asking them, so not making assumptions on that. We're going through this alpha phase now, which is creating and testing what the right solution is to that problem. So next week, we've got a, I think it's a four, four and a half day, uh, process uh, with the showcase on the Thursday. It kicks off on Monday, but this is a shout out. We still need some coders. So if there's any developers who are interested, uh, we could use your skills probably around Shan, is it Tuesday? Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday. Um, any, any UX designers who would really like to get involved, please talk to Shan as well, or Rosie um, after this session. But thank you very much, very excited to have you here. Um, the other, uh, before I hand over to Michelle, the other plug that I'm gonna give is uh, we got open data through Cancel back in um, November 2015. We've got over 100 data sets on the platform. This is all about how are we providing and enabling um, you guys create some great solutions. So we've got some great data. We're trying to make that data better. So we're open to understanding what you need, but also what data would you like to see? And Will McIntosh, who's in the room, our open data lead. Will? No, he has no. stepped out. He will be here, he'll come back. Um, but we're also very interested to hear from you. So thank you very much. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what you've been up to. Cheers. And no, Michelle. Welcome everyone to City Lab and City of Melbourne. Um, hands up if you knew that City Lab existed. I think City Melbourne's been here. That's awesome. Did you know about our open data platform as well? Anyone? Anyone? Cool. Um, well, welcome. It's a real delight to have you all today. Thanks, Alvaro and Code for Australia, for the opportunity. Um, I might just set the scene a little bit in terms of digital and smart city in the City of Melbourne, what that actually means. Um, so our team has got a couple of key responsibilities. The digital component for us is really about digitising council services. So we've got 37 odd kilometres square that are the, represents the city of Melbourne with around 130,000 residents. So that rate is increasing at a rate of knots. We've got about 900,000 people coming to the city every single day. Workers, students, business owners, tourists, etc. And um, just about every single one of those people at some point in time are touched by our services. So we've got a program underway that's all about digitising council services. The vision is that if you do need to interact with the City of Melbourne, first of all, we should be visible as much as possible. Um, but if you do need to instigate an interaction with us, if you're moving house, starting a family, starting a business, that we should be the easiest thing to assist and develop your organisation. Now, for any of you who have dealt with the government platform for any sort recently, or heard about Send for Fail, which is nothing to do with us, um, clearly we've got a long way to go, but that's the ambition, is that we are here to make people's lives, people's lives easier, and we are funded by ratepayers, so that's what we do. But actually, most of what I'm going to talk about today is really around smart cities, and that's where our team spends most of our time. Um, and what's really interesting is I was really pleased when, when I started here about a year ago that Melbourne was very much on the journey already to becoming a smart city. Some might argue we're already smart today with the experiences. So what is smart city? Um, for the technologists in the room, it's all about the internet of things, it's about machines talking to people, talking to cars, talking to buildings, talking to businesses. We're all connected, data flows everywhere and perfectly <laughs> and that makes us smart and allows us to manage the city in a really efficient way. Um, in reality, for most of the people who fund us, ratepayers, business owners, that doesn't mean much to them. So 
So we talk about smart city in terms of the problems that we can help solve that will make people's lives easier. So for example, how can we apply technology to make it easier for you to plan your trip in, out and around the city every single day, whilst our population doubles over the next 45 odd years? How can we leverage technology to make our city safer? How can we leverage technology to help make people living healthier? So that to us is what Smart City is all about. And we've got a consultation process underway at the moment to help us co-design what that means for venues and a formal program of work that will need to be executed over the next few decades, actually. Um, and so we're really engaged with about 100, 150 more venues around the priority problems to solve for Smart City. Congestion was in three of the top eight challenges, interestingly, traffic, whether people on a bike, or walking through the streets of Melbourne, or jumping on a train, or driving, is something that all of us face just about every single day, coming in and out of the city. Um, and the next stages of work are engaging with professionals, so startups, universities, businesses that work in the space, to define the end outcome for Melbourne's smart city, and what that means in terms of different ways of infrastructure, networks, data, etc. cetera. A lot of work to be done uh, over the next few months. We've also got quite a big focus on startups, really important agenda for us. We've engaged with about 150 odd members of the startup ecosystem this month, last month, sorry, October. Um, and again, in the spirit of co-creation, we're working with startups to define the experience of starting, growing, and going global with the business in Melbourne. We're identifying the gaps in the ecosystem today, and then we're getting startups to work with us to prioritise where the city of Melbourne should be filling some of those gaps versus where we should be influencing others. And of course, because we're funded by ratepayers, we can't do everything. And I don't think anyone expects us to do everything. Some people don't naturally see us as players in this space. But we certainly feel an obligation to create a really strong brand for Melbourne around the startup economy to attract talent and investment. And to do whatever we can to help the students of today who are saying they want to start a business rather than going to a corporate. Um, and to help our local businesses go globally. So watch this space. But in terms of Smart City, um, there's a whole bunch of projects already underway which might not know about. <laughs> um, so Lorraine's mentioned City Lab and the Open Data Platform. Um, parking sensors, just about every on-street parking spot, not the private ones, but the ones out on the street, have got a parking sensor today. Uh, if you've been fined recently, you're probably well aware of that. I certainly have been in the past. Um, and that's moving to a real-time system uh, over the next few months. And what we really love, because we're going to make that data available in as close to real time as possible on our open data platform, we'd really love for a couple of startups to come along and build predictive parking apps to help Melbournians better plan their journeys in and out of the city. Um, we've got an LED streetlight program that's rolling out shortly. That's all about um, reducing um, emissions, but with that comes improved safety. And with the LED rollout, we can start to stick lots of sensors on top of light poles. And that really excites us in terms of it means for measuring everything from pollution and uh, pollen levels through to noise and um, some other techniques. Um, we've got email addresses we're allowed to read. I watched the email a tree the other day and it wrote back. <laughs> it's a very polite tree. Um, the reason we have that program is because our trees are an asset for the city. Uh, trees are really important to help reduce temperatures in the city. Um, yesterday was a one-off, and the last month has been one-off in terms of temperatures in Melbourne. But when we do have extreme heat, um, we, that actually leads to a whole range of health complications. If think about every single summer in Melbourne, you get a heat stroke. So the trees program is actually about increasing shade levels that helps reduce temperatures, and we map those trees, and as a result, we can email addresses for our trees. And homeless people write to them saying, thank you for your shade. Visitors write to them saying, thank you for walking to Melbourne. It's a really nice touch. Um, so that's just a snapshot of some of the programs on the way. In terms of where we're going next, um, I thought rather than me talk about where this kind of co-creation process is going to, I might share the, the views of some other Melbourneans. Um, we run a whole range of hackathons, as you're aware. Um, I'm not sure if any of you were involved with that Digital City hackathon. Do you remember that Easter challenge here? Yes. Sorry? Someone who um, on our board. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you might recognise some of the faces in this video. So we ran um, Two Day Hack. Yeah. We had about 100 designers, coders, and Melbourneans of all walks of life sign up. We had retirees, we had children, a bit like today. <laughs> we had everything in between. 
Um, and the challenge we set for them was, as Melbourne's population doubles over the next 35 years, as global temperatures continue to rise, how can we better leverage technology to protect what's great about Melbourne and makes us the world's most living city today? Um, Melbourne is a city for everyone. We're a design city, we're a foodie and coffee city, we're a sporting city. How can we protect what's great about that whilst we face all these changes in the dynamics of how we operate as a city? So the video is a huge sense of um, the views of some other people, and then I'll wrap up shortly after that. Technology never fails. I don't know if you're that. You set up here, sorry. <laughs> no, technology always fails. Every so time. Does. <laughs> I tested this before. Come on. Sorry. Going to the streets of Melbourne. What does it mean potentially your data is being captured to inform 
um, public transport scheduling decisions? What does it mean if people you know are starting to lose their jobs through more and more automation? And for many people, that's quite fearful. And so taking this customer first approach, whether it's redesigning council services right through to thinking about what, what impact might driverless electric share cars have in Melbourne, we really need to engage Melbournians in these processes and the changes in design for the city. Um, digital technologies, fortunately, give us a whole range of new tools to do that. Um, but involving them through facilities like City Lab is so important so that we have Melbournians telling other Melbournians about why this stuff's important for us, the trails we face, and why we're making certain decisions. The customer first is a really important part of their mandate going forward. Um, digital data obviously underpinning everything we do. The focus on data for us, the open data platform, is absolutely key. Um, one of the outputs from this work we're doing smart, around smart city is we want to make available on our website the priority problems that Melbourne people need to solve using technology, such as congestion, safety, pollution, etc. Um, but then we need to match those problems with data sets, not just from the city of Melbourne, but from other stakeholders. If you think about the amount of data being created in cities every single day through transport, through the university, through Wi-Fi networks, mobile networks, we want to really actively promote different stakeholders making those data sets available and open data platforms as much as possible so that people like such as ourselves can get online, innovate and create solutions to help more burners going forward. Um, so what's next? I think I've provided a bit of a snapshot of some of the things that are coming down the pipeline. Um, we're looking quite seriously at the potential innovation precinct in the city. Um, and the thinking there is really about creating not just a virtual space and meetups like this, but a physical space where different stakeholders can come together to co-create the future Melbourne. And a physical space where we might, for example, be able to relinquish some of the usual permissions we put on things like IT centres and bubbling with uh, infrastructure in the city. Um, we might put such permissions in, exchange, uh, in place in exchange for data on the open data platform. So there's some work underway looking at that. Big focus on startups um, and a big focus on thinking about how do we best leverage virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, big data, um, IoT and so on to appropriately future proof our city. So I hope that gives you a bit of a snapshot. Um, I wish you all the best for today. I wish I could stay. I'm really excited to hear where you're um, thanks again for coming to Lab, and please stay in touch. If you're interested in any of these projects, just speak to the Lab crew and they'll come this up. Yeah, email address to citylab at melbourne.vic.gov.au. <laughs> a bit of a plug there. Over to who's next. Thanks, cool. Thanks, Michelle.